Right, Yom. When you climb those ruins back in Moscow, or with your radio, did you imagine our life on the surface at all? A home, for one. A place where we could live. A log cabin on the outskirts of a forest. Or how about a bungalow on an ocean shore? Well, you know, there's something great in simply going anywhere like this. Together. Through the abandoned stations, the ruins, the wasteland. Especially in our own private compartment. Hey guys, welcome back to Thinking another back. episode. Isn't this our honeymoon trip? In the place for <laughs> Metro Exodus. It certainly feels like one, even though it's a bit late. We've only had some honeymoon sorties at best so far. Alright. Is he done talking? No, I had a no. talk with Katya. God damn it. I'm sitting here recalling that bridge and those people there, and we've been sitting underground for 20 years, and they haven't. So what? These are not the same people who used to build cities, planes, and space rockets. They're just like us in Metro, only even more dejected. They are essentially slaves, for real. They work all day and pray all night. Always watched, always directed. Everything is under control. Dejected. Is decided by no the idea community. what that means. Well, I mean, Celantius. They don't even have any property. Even their socks belong to the community. They're just entranced with him, with his ridiculous lies about electricity. Of course, not everyone got fooled easily, but if they dare ask questions, they get penance. Exercising an electric demon with prayer and the cross. But that's a death sentence. How is a flashlight dangerous? Or a radio? But no, they shun it all. They hide and keep praying. How can you even make people believe this ridiculous garbage within just a few years? People in general start believing lies surprisingly easily, don't they? As long as those lies are convenient or at least familiar. Take us, in Metro. All right, we haven't met the occupying forces yet. If we disregard that shirt I found on an antenna... <coughs> Katya and Crest never met them either. But maybe they are still out there somewhere. And if they are, then they didn't even tell us about them back home. They didn't tell us that the war was still on. They just made us believe that there's no life anywhere outside of Metro. They've been lying to us. Lying non-stop. All this time. Were their intentions good? Perhaps. But the Metro is a castle built on lies. Damn, am I angry. And so far, no matter how far we get, we haven't met a single enemy. Isn't that strange? But Father won't have a word of it. Stay vigilant, be careful, the enemy never sleeps. You know, I love my father. A whole lot, no matter what. But what if everything he's been told is just another layer of lies? I hope we'll find out how deep this rabbit hole is, once we get to Yamantau. <sighs> well, what do you know? I do feel better now, after telling you. Well, they Thanks really for hearing me out, know team. how to babble, those NPCs. Let's just sit here a little. Anyways, I uh, booted up the game and I left the previous episode while already going through some dialogue so i was expecting it to simply be the same dialogue and just walk away from it but then she got All like right, this run along dad wanted something she got like this um, yeah a new dialogue like sit beside me and then this whole story came out so i'm also now quickly checking out whether the dialogue at the back is different Uncle Dokarev has already set his shop up. Yes, we already saw this, but I have to go through it again. Uncle Artyom. Ah, hi Artyom. You see my new place? 
fit for a king, I must say. Probably uh, this is mandatory to open up the workbench. workbench eh? Everything is within reach. Yet there's so much space left. If you find it boring, just uh, skip ahead a bit. Went into making this workshop happen. So thank you. I can imagine. We'll have to keep pitching in like this too. See if we Looks can like activate this one. Journey, and useful things like ammo or equipment don't grow on trees. Plus, the further from Moscow we get, the harder they'll probably be to get. So don't forget to collect all the materials you find to keep us going. There's so many things to do. I haven't decided where I'm going to work on the suits, but I'll have to, and soon. And it's high time we fixed our uniforms. Some of our people are starting to look pretty ragged, you know. There are like, I think, What's three more weapons to be unlocked, ready? going by the um, jokes that is mounts on the wall. One, or else his doors will be in danger. Regardless, I am turning this little gang back into a real army. Well, that's it. I bragged enough and won't waste any more of your time. The colonel summoned you. Well, I have stuff to do too. You guys are fast to break gear, but none too expedient to fix it. Alright, now he's gonna teach her to sew. Uncle Tokarev! Uncle Tokarev! <sighs> What would you like to ask, Nastya? Uncle Tucker, do you have a sewing machine? No, I don't. Alright. Um, how are you going to fix the suits then? Will I be making something? Well, like everyone else, I take a thread and a needle and One of these. a sail stitch. Whoa, cool. The rest can I'm all pretty good to go. You sure can, but later. I've got work to do. Will you let me fix Sam's rifle strap? I wonder whether I can, like, switch out a weapon. That doesn't really seem possible for another class. And Uncle Sam isn't strict at all. How can I... Alright, look here. I'll show you... For instance, get these weapons. Do I just interact with them? I see. At least we got a save point, but I cannot really interact with them. What I also uh, noticed accidentally by browsing a forum, I missed a collectible in the winter area, like Volga. There is apparently in some container um, a extended uh, gas mask filter, G uh, having a duration of five minutes filtering time instead of three. So that's a pretty big bummer that I missed it. It's another indication that you really have to uh, look in lots of nooks and crannies to get the full experience. I'm not going to go back. I don't even know it's, uh, think it's possible with the autosave system. But um, yeah, it is what it is. I missed out on that one. Anyways, I will quickly trigger the guy at the back. I will not go through his whole dialogue because it's a lot of rambling. But just for the record that the game... Uh, yeah, triggers it that hopefully that I will get back to him. He, they won't trigger this dialogue, but maybe a new one. So as I, so I won't miss out on uh, stuff. But in the previous episode, I really pretty much overheard already everything he had to say in this situation here. Oh, a smoke break. That's good. A lot of rambling. This will be. Oh, this is one mean smoke. He, st yeah, he starts off slowly, but well, he won't stop babbling. <coughs> well, you are the right kind of guys. You, the colonel, Duke. That guy did a swell job on that bridge. All right, I will just hear him no, out. He's bragging about it like a child. He's a child. Really, not a child. But he's good. So, uh, yeah, what did I want to say? Ah, uh, yes. Uh, thank you. you. You people accepted me, and, and I... Uh, I'm a simple guy. I, I, I will pay that debt back, okay? Thank you. So, 
How do you like it out here after your tunnels? Freedom, huh? Yes. Sure thing. So much space. It feels too empty to me, though. Just reeds and ruins and those damn mutants. Hey, them. God damn it! Forgot the timer. No, hey. you guys are gonna see the government. So, Bratucha, don't be mad, but just tell me, what the hell do you even need them for? Well, of course, it might be interesting to take a look, but throughout all of my rambling, I only met two kinds of ex-government people: dead ones and gang leaders. And let me tell you, the latter are much worse than your typical bandit. They just have to make a speech before doing something off. So what I mean, I, I didn't really care about the government even before the war, much less now, when everything's nonsense gone to shit. So what for, really? I'm a simple man, Artyomich. I told I'm with you, that means I'm with you for the long haul. But I'd much rather find a nice place to live at than go see the government. Of course, they could give us luxury bunkers or something. Well, Artyom, you seem cold. Go get warmed up a bit. I'll smoke some more. I have stuff to think about. Or just stay. <laughs> we have enough space now. Just curious if he will ramble on. Nope, I've exhausted all the dialogue. It wasn't as long as I remembered it to be. So I have like some warped perception. Or recollection. Ah. Actually, um, a collectible. Nastia's letter. Dear Daddy, I write this so you know where to look for mommy and me when you come back. Because Mommy and I wanted to stay, but Silentius says we must go to the tower and leave this car, and I don't want to. I wanted to wait for you in the car, but Mommy said I can't, and Silentius said you won't come back because you failed the test of faith. He is a stupid liar because you never needed any tests as here, there, as their faith is dumb. I remember you said so. Mommy said nothing, but I know she is waiting for you too. So please come back soon and take us away from these fools. I love you very much. Nastya. Alright, he probably never came back. Just a bit of slow exposition before getting into the action again. See if she, see if she has some more dialogue. And maybe actually it's best if I just dedicate this whole episode to a bit of a contextualization. Meaning I will read the uh, notebook over there. Just to get... Uh, I want, uh, in the previous episode I said I will do it later. But actually it's more fun if I do it up front. So that I have a better understanding of the world and the monsters that we've already encountered. It will for some people be probably pretty boring. Uh, it will probably take the rest of the episode uh, and maybe even a bit of the next one. But uh, yeah, if you uh, yeah don't care for like uh, the backstory of the, the world, then just uh, skip ahead. If you are actually watching this, I'm mostly my own uh, uh, single viewer, but you never know. Uh, should you uh, get bored, then just skip ahead. But I will uh, get through the uh, notebook now. So, here we go. These were like really weird controls. Was the D-pad? Nope, it's not this one. It is maybe this one. No, that's getting up. God damn it. I know which one it is. It's down. Alright, diary. When it has been years since anyone's heard anything but static and white noise on the radio, who could still believe we're not alone on this earth? My wife, my comrades from the Order, my friends, people from my station, nobody believes me. They are sure that there is nothing on the radio. Sure that save for us who hit in Moscow Metro, there were no survivors of the last war. We are alone on this planet and in the Metro it's common knowledge. But I did hear that call on the radio with my own ears. Yes, it was immediately thrown out by the static but I had heard it. 
which means that somewhere out there under the skies there's still a habitable place we're not doomed to live the rest of our lives underground this is actually i think what's also in the loading menus but i'll read it just for the completion's sake anyways still nobody believes me We stopped a hundred clicks from Moscow to check our Geiger counters. The thing is, they are all in the green and as if they're in conspiracy. Still, this amazing piece of news doesn't really impress anyone that much. The guys are all confused as to what to do next and I, I'm just waiting for answers. And hoping the commander, who until recently I trusted implicitly, is going to be extremely persuasive in his reasoning. After all of those years in the underground, by the way, this was Moscow, this is the winter, this is the Volga. After all those years in the underground, the air of the surface seemed incredibly fresh, intoxicating. But that was not the cause of the crew's euphoria. Our journey finally had a definitive, definite purpose provided by the transmission from the government bunker in the Euros. We spent 20 years thinking that neither the government nor military high command had survived. As it turned out, they were still around. Where were they while we were eating each other alive in the metro? We had lots of questions to ask them once we reached Yamanto. If we ever would, the ruins of our country were under enemy control, according to Miller, and we could have to fight through our goal. Through to our goal. A small team against the occupation armies. What chance did we have to succeed to get some answers? Yet setting out on our recon mission, Anna and I did not ponder these questions. We just kept filling our lungs with that sweet fresh air, splashing about the spring puddles like children out for the first walk after a long sickness. When I docked the old and battered but still surprisingly watertight boat at the goal, it became apparent why our arrival terrified the locals. These fanatics are for some reason convinced that if it was electricity that brought about mankind's demise. So they avoid any and all technology like the plague. On the other hand, they have a grain of reason in their belief for technical progress did in fact enable our self-destruction. They didn't get me with their traps thanks to a little girl and her mother who had been held by the fanatics in that murky and damp room for about a year. If the locals would do such a thing, was there any real hope that they'd be inclined to let us cross the bridge? I'm not sure. I did manage to help Katja and Nestia escape the church, but the reinforcements that had arrived to spring the trap on the dangerous heretic that I was saw me. I had no choice, but still. I'm not sure. I did manage to help Katja escape the church, but the reinforcements uh, saw me. I had no choice, but still, I have no reason to be proud of my action. I had hoped that there on the surface. We would be able to live different lives. Back in the metro, people were constantly at each other's throats through lack of living space and even air. But why would they hate have to die here? Such a waste. There is one consolation though. Now we have a reliable source of information on the fanatics and we might be able to use the new information to cross the bridge while avoiding even heavier sacrifice. Katja and Nastya didn't just tell us about the phonetics, but also about Crest, a traveling mechanic hated by the phonetics because of his traits. It's their loss, really. They can go back to using flint tools for all we care, while we're lucky to have such a versatile handyman in our crew now. While I was out looking for Crest, Anna managed to get into an adventure of her own. She fell down some cellar and hit her head, knocking herself out and breathing in some poisonous fumes from chem chemicals abandoned there who knows how many years ago. She seemed to have suffered no serious injury though. I was still mad at her father. His paranoia went way too far, making us all see enemy banners in every old wreck. We found no occupying forces in this backwater. Even the chemicals in the cellar seemed to be wholly domestic. Luckily, they were long past their expiry date, or so it seemed. Getting the rail car left by Crest in the abandoned loading terminal was not easy. The half-blooded, flooded building was where the enormous catfish, one of the pillars of the local crazy parody of a religion, made its lair. I must give the fanatics their due, though. They did turn the building into a veritable shrine, even though housed not just the catfish, 
but also hordes of human-like mutants, which were of course overjoyed to see me. The enormous mutated catfish, the locals were terrified of, were terrified of, did not stop us. I found it funny though that they would address their prayers to that fish. Could man make a god out of anything? Can the degenerates we've been fighting be even called men though? At the end of the day, I had successfully exchanged some ammo for a real car in great condition, more than capable of tugging the passenger carriage that had brought Katja to this accursed place one day back to the Aurora. I had to take some trash out first though, wading through mud amongst the rusty railway carriage, carriages and dead husks of abandoned buildings. I had for some reason expected to have left the bandits, along with Moscow's poisonous air far far back. Now I do of course understand that it was rather silly of me, there is no changing the human nature and anarchy could only make the worst qualities of it present themselves present themselves. The beautiful is always unique while the ugly is surprisingly uniform. These bandits were they hardened criminals or just people left desperate and robbed of most of their humanity by the war that had blown over them, differed from their metro counterparts by clothes and names at most. Their actions robbing, murdering and capturing innocent people to sell into slavery were exactly the same. My opinion of the fanatics notwithstanding, only a complete and utter bastard could have left them in the hands of the bandits. Naturally, the bandits would keep terrorizing the locals afterwards. They might even be torturing some new victims at this very moment, but at least I saved somebody, simply because I could not have done otherwise. It was pointless to even try to talk to the fanatics into letting us cross the bridge, so our only option was to take the matter into our own hands and lower the movable section of the bridge regardless of their opinion on that. The problem was we couldn't really get into the bridge from the shore, so we had to use the last remaining path of entry, the river, where the fanatics could not expect us from. That path could only be rendered accessible with the help of a tugboat we would rent from the river traders. Luckily the trader's captain proved to be no fool and surrendered immediately after glancing to the barrels of our weapons trained on his head. The boat's crew remained completely oblivi oblivious of our infiltration until we took the situation under control, so no blood was spilled. For us the bridge was little more than an obstacle to cross, but for the fanatics it was a lot more. It was their safe haven from the terrible demons of electricity, their home, their temple and their fortress. No wonder they weren't exactly keen on letting just anyone through. That said, their guards were sure less than competent. Lulled into complacency by the safety of their home, ground so much so that Duke and I managed to sneak into the very heart of their cult completely undetected. All that stealth and special operation training Miller had us go through definitely paid off. And we got a drop on Silentius, who was left with no option but surrender. We left Volga behind, there we met people who had spent all these years living in the open and never heard about the war still going on or the condition we had to tolerate living in the metro. When I received the signals from the survivors outside of Moscow for the first time I thought the people of the service would be different from us, would be free from fear and hopelessness. In the metro we knew we were not living but merely passing time before death. So for some reason I expected the people who knew they had a problem tomorrow to be somehow wiser, more free and noble than us. I was wrong. They were just as miserable and lost as we were. Perhaps the problem was not the metro, but us all alone. If here on the surface we continue doing the same things we did underground, we might never get a chance to build a future. A vast world stretches before us and I am sure we will find what we are looking for if the occupying forces don't get us on the way. All right, that was a pretty long entry. Uh, there's one thing I also read somewhere on the internet, and that is the section with uh, capturing the tugboat. Doing that either lethally or non-lethally has an impact on the good or the bad uh, ending of the game. So I'm pretty glad, without knowing uh, that fact, uh, that I did go through it uh, non-lethally. So we are still in the race, I hope, for a good ending. 
So this was the Volga, and now we read the spring entry, which is a bit, uh, a bit, uh, much shorter. So that's good. We left Volga behind. The endless expenses of Russia stretch before us now. The bridge dwellers had finally decided to believe that we were not demons and let us pass. And I was right. We invaded their world, and it's not up to us to destroy it, no matter how stupid it may seem. Electricity is a sin. Is that really worse than the lies we were told in the metro about how the whole world was dead and there was nowhere to go? Everybody in the tunnels, tunnels bought that convenient lie. Once we reach Manto, we will at least know if that lie was justified, since so far we haven't met any signs of enemy occupation. All right, that was the diary. The crew, let's check the time. Holy shit, only five minutes left. Holy shit, there's so much text. Anna, my Anna, from the very beginning, I thought I was not worthy of you. What was I? A nerdy guy from a backwater station, a dreamer, hearing voices in his head, an adventure seeker. And you, the most beautiful girl on the metro, the only daughter of the legendary Colonel, Colonel Miller, the best snapper of the Spartan order. But how did you put it? There were lots of hard boiled guys around. God, how much have we been through together we had our bright days and really dark ones our feelings would die out and rekindle again i even tried to leave but couldn't go too far you wanted a normal man but you still accepted me as i am you were the only one who didn't consider me mad when i spent days on the surface listening to the radio in fruitless attempts of receiving signals from the other survivors you knew that Every such sortie meant more radiation exposure for me and less chances for healthy children should we ever have them. And you would still let me go. You didn't prohibit me from dreaming. I always felt your gaze on me when you would cuff my back in combat and when I would lose my way. I was... Cuff my back. I think it should be cover my back, but... I'm gonna check that verb out, make it a learning moment later on. Cough. And uh, I was always in your field of view. I always kept that nobody, I always knew that nobody could ever replace you, my personal guardian angel of death. If this is not love, what is? And I, you wanted to believe me and you couldn't. You tried to not pay attention to your father and you did. The colonel firmly believes that our country is occupied and that the war is still going on and that makes us jumpy. Makes us expect an attack at every turn. Makes us look for traces of enemy presence, presence everywhere. He has riled us, riled up, he has us riled up and Anna is not immune to that. She was so eager to find the occupying forces in a tiny abandoned village near the bridge over Vola that she saw an American banner in a mere old t-shirt in a mere old t-shirt. She went to investigate and fell through the roof of an old chemical storage silo. Luckily, the chemicals seemed to have been long since expired and Anna got away with just a few bruises. Needless to say, there was not a trace of foreign troops presence anywhere close. All right, is this also a long one? God damn it. All right, I will quickly read this one and then end the episode and continue in the next one. Miller, Colonel Swatch. Stolislav Konstantinovich Melnikov, the founder and the permanent commander of the Order of Sparta. Miller picked and, and trained each Spartan individually. He was the only one to come to the rescue of my home station when we were under attack by the Dark Ones. He was the only one to stand between the Communists and the Nazis and prevent the conflict, conflict which could well spell the ultimate end of our civilization. It was Miller who accepted me into the Order and blessed our union with Anna. His only daughter. I became his son-in-law, but could never amass the courage to call him dead. Nothing but colonel with a sir, of course. In the D6 defense, the colonel lost his best fighter and his old self. Something is forever broken is him in him. He became cold, completely intolerant of, of and any dissent. Sometimes I feel he's sorry he didn't object his daughter marrying me. He would have probably preferred Hunter as his in law but hunter is missing and i dragged his daughter into a maelstrom none of us might ever emerge from i dragged the colonel into the worst adventure of his life he had to commit high treason to save his daughter with me in tow he is convinced that the war is still going on that moscow had to fake death 
to prevent the final murderous strike from being launched against it. But Anna is still his daughter and I'm still one of his soldiers. So he, in his advanced age, risks everything. He has his reputation, his position in the Metro, the most of his order, everything to save us too and maybe somehow get himself out of this mess. We are going to the Yamanto Mountain where the Supreme Command Headquarters is located. Only the true government of our destroyed country could now pardon the colonel for treason. Of course, if they agree to even listen to him at all. There's one problem though. It's been a few days since we left Moscow, but we have yet to find a trace of the occupying forces. Jesus, I'm getting all dizzy from reading this stuff. Anyways, let's strut along in the next episode. Sorry guys, this is a very pretty boring one. No action, just reading. But um, yeah, it is part of the deep playthrough, getting to grips with the backstory. I will continue it in the next one and hopefully it will uh, be not that much text anymore as it was in this one. Hope to see you there and for the meantime, do keep on gaming. See you later.